All right, welcome back to Planet Gen X. Well, maybe we'll just talk about a little uh, Picard episode five, man. Did you catch that this week? I did. You? Yeah, it was uh, it was a pretty good episode compared to last. Well, I mean, I mean, I wouldn't say compared to last week. I, so far as compared to how we've talked about Mandalorian and how it lulled from the start, this one's been pretty consistent episode to yes. episode. So yeah, yeah if, there's no compared to last week stuff. It's just great. Um, continuing on the story, I told you last time that I thought that it felt like uh, maybe we're just done all of a sudden, you know, just like, <laughs> right. wow, everything, we're past that, we're out of the nebula, everything's kosher, we're cool now. Um, now we feeling... out we're not, we're not cool, you know, because now we have to answer for all that shit, you know, yep. and um, <laughs> by the way, it, as much as I wanted to hate Shaw at the beginning, he's just growing on me so much. Because he's just like a little kid just standing there. He's just so excited they're about to get their comeuppance. I just thought that was yeah. great. Uh, yeah, like, I, I don't know. He, he's just got this uh, this every man, this, this guy that doesn't even seem like he belongs in Starfleet at all. Just, you know, ready to say also whatever's on his grain. mind. Yeah, very against right. the grain. Kind of, yeah. Uh, yeah, you just wouldn't see it. You just don't think of that in a military environment. But uh, what a surprise we had. Gonna- you know, with uh, with Roe coming in, I thought that yeah. was crazy. Uh, wow, I wasn't was expecting, expecting that it. at all. <laughs> yeah. Right. And she, man, as soon as I saw her, I was like, "What the freaking hell is this shit?" I Michelle Forbes pisses me off in every show. I don't care if it's <laughs> True Blood, if it's the new Battlestar Galactica, uh, the old Star Trek. Every time I have seen her in something, she is playing somebody who is not a nice well, person. Let me ask you this. When you see a wedge haircut, does your blood pressure instantly rise? Yes, it does. No <laughs> doubt. I've, yeah, I've had a long uh, standing issue with that haircut anyway. <laughs> no woman should go around looking like a lesbian unless she is a lesbian. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just the way it should be. But uh, yeah, it was crazy seeing her. And she's Commander, um, Commander Roe now, which of course she beats back Riker real quick when he calls her, you know, Roe. She's like, hell, hell no. You can call me Commander from now on. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be Commander from now on. And we think she's just going to be a real bitch the whole time, but mm-hmm. it turns out that she's, uh, uh, but, well, Picard actually is kind of a bitch too because, you know, he's all butt hurt, which I really think when I when I see the story and the way he, I swear to God, I thought the whole time when they're back and forth, when, when they, they start to get to talk, I really thought that at some point he was going to tell her that he broke her heart, that he that he loved her in some way. Not you know maybe not the traditional system, but in some capacity that he loved her. Well, I think that's what they were getting out without saying it. Yeah, know, but I wanted him to say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really wanted him to say it. Yeah, and he didn't even say it like at the end of the episode either. He never said it. So. No, not even after death. That then see, I guess that's where I wanted it. Yeah, you know, uh, but so I mean, yeah, it's crazy because we don't think she's there to help at all, and then right. we find out that well, it, but I had a similar feeling that this was like, uh, um, which is it? What was it? Uh, Deep Space Nine. It had a similar feel to something from that, where you had the uh, infiltration of the Changeling, uh, um, Starfleet Academy, mm-hmm. and you know, you had to figure out who knew what. In that, you know, who who was behind everything and who you could trust, and Cisco, who who he could trust, uh, it had a very similar feel to that. Well, it it, it kind of breaks away from a lot of uh, shows. Uh, there's this uh, established mentality that you have to trust the the story, right? Yeah. You have to trust that the story that you're getting is accurate, right? Um, and as opposed to, uh, at first I was thinking like, they're playing around with that. You can't trust what you're seeing or what you yeah. think, you know, Yeah. but really they're dancing around it because they're not doing that. They're just not giving you everything. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> they finally, they end up going to the, the holodeck of, uh, and, uh, we, 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 it was, she pulls the phaser on him and we were at first I'm like, well, okay. So the worm has turned and I'm glad it turned quickly. Cause I knew something was up. You well, know, to I, be fair, they walked in and he turned off safety protocols. So when she pulled a gun, he had a gun. Yeah. Yeah. He was right on top of it. So that was, <laughs> that was kind of cute. And then, uh, 
course, they hash it out. So, uh, and that's when we really find out, man, that he has been harboring some feelings, man, like big time. Uh, so has I kept she. saying, you take, yeah, you're taking it way personal, buddy. <laughs> he took it very personal. And, um, yeah, I don't know. He had like a, a a real personal issue with the McKee in general because of the whole history yeah, turning of the Will back on and Star Trek, everybody Star, else. Star yeah, because yeah. he's such a uh, man of duty and honor. And you, you said turn? duty, duty. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, and honor, of course. And uh, then she, of course, he even brings that up to her, and she gets pissy about that, about the whole honor thing, and. Yeah, I, I really liked how th- that they explored this. Like, it yeah. was cool that that Ro got to have an ending because it yeah. was it was a decent character. They had they had some good stories that came out of it back in the day, and uh, I gotta say, I didn't see it coming. So it was nice nice that they brought her in. So she's basically where we think she's gonna be against Picard. She brings him like, dude, uh, Starfleet's fucked. You, we need. I need your help. I need it bad. Uh, do you trust me yeah. all that jazz and well we uh, find out that there's been a series of incidents involving changelings over a variety of starships yeah yeah she's starting up to, to let us in on a lot of stuff that this is not an isolated incident that, right uh, starfleet is compromised and uh yes yeah, so, at the highest levels yep so they uh she's trying to buy them some time so they can get away from the intrepid and get out of there and uh she buys him more time than I guess she expected, but it's exactly how I thought it was going to end up. She ends up dying, going into a nacelle. They they plant a bomb on her, and she can't get away from it. And long story short, she dies and crashing in the cell and gives him a chance to get away. But it really just uh, it's really a good ending, a fitting ending for her character because uh, she was always kind of just there at, at the end by herself. And every every time it was just always just her. Yeah, uh, well, I also thought it was great because you know she is so far she is the only person to push back on, on the whole you know idea that Starfleet is worthy by it's just being right. Yeah, and and also talk about somebody who doesn't seem like they belong in Starfleet at all either. When we were talking about Shaw, she yeah. was the first person we got like that. And isn't it interesting that I said I didn't like him at first either, and he's growing on me. Yeah. I never even put that connection together, but those are two peas in a pod right there. Sure. I'd agree. So, uh, yeah, she dies, and they they end up uh, getting away, more or less, I guess. Uh, well, uh, she runs into the nacelle, and uh, basically the intrepid uh, is ready to like draw down on them oh yeah yeah they're, yeah. they're firing everything up yep and they yeah. get away in like two seconds right before the the torpedoes <laughs> run into yeah them. they shoot the torpedoes and then like right before they hit they zoom, zoom out <laughs> yeah. uh really good episode i thought um because just just the unexpected part of it uh yeah the 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 thing between wharf uh See, I thought it was like uh, Worf knew she was. A, 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 we find out that you know she's Worf's handler, um, right. that that she's she's in the section thirty one. But uh, Raffi didn't know that Worf was her handler, but Worf knew you know that Roe was. So it's kind of messed up because uh, I imagine he's going to take her death pretty hard. Right. Well, I mean, so they never expressly say that she was his handler, and it's. Easy to make that distinction uh, from what we're given. He knew that she was in with him. Yeah. Uh, could be that they're not giving us all of the story again. Yeah, maybe it's not else. his direct handler, but I, I, I yeah. think that's worth it. I do, too. I, hey, I kind of agree. Um, Speaking yeah. of Worf, so we had him and Rafi. Yeah. Yeah. They uh they returned to what was it District Seven? Oh yes, and this guy, this guy from uh, Oz. I, that's the first thing I ever noted, Matt. And, and and he also did another movie uh, about the same year that Oz came out called uh, it was just a little independent movie called um, Dinner Rush. Hmm. It's a really good. Well, I mean, it, it's a pretty good movie. It's not a very long movie, but uh, I like it. Sandra Bernhardt's in it. Um, uh, uh, Danny Aiello. 
It's really good. I like it a lot. It's, uh, check it out sometimes. It's not easy to find, but I did find yeah. a copy of it. Downloaded it. Maybe I'll upload it for you. I've still got it somewhere. Okay. But uh, yeah, so, and then he was also, we were talking about 12 Monkeys. And now Terry Metalis, the showrunner of Picard, uh, was uh, involved in the 12 okay. Monkeys production. So a lot of the things we're seeing, there's a lot of little 12 Monkey Easter eggs in there. And uh, uh, yeah, that, what, what was, you, uh, you said the guy's name. I've never actually known the actor's name. Kirk Acovado. Acovado, yeah. Yeah, it was funny because he had this scar on his face that, that is a Vulcan. And, and Oz, he has a similar scar on yeah. uh, where he cuts himself in the, in the show. Uh, what a yeah. great show that was, too, Oz. But um, well, previously we mentioned the the fact that you know Lance Reddick just passed. Uh, he was a great voice actor. I always thought Kirk would make an excellent voice actor too. He's got a great voice. Yeah, he does, and, and you can tell because I know the voice that I heard from him doing in Oz, just his regular voice or whatever, maybe with a, you know a, a New York accent or something. But in yeah. this, he's putting on a lot of extra uh you know guttural sounds in there making it more rough and lower timber and yet still having kind of the cadence of a vulcan as well mm-hmm. you know the way they talk it's, it's he's very good at it and i like yeah i like the way he says about uh the, about him being a gangster being logical that was a nice little yeah little thing he said i wish i could remember exactly utopia cannot exist without crime therefore an organized criminal or an organized criminal entity is logical. There you go. That's it right there. It was a good line. It was. It was, it was great. Because <laughs> how could you? Great for yeah. a Vulcan criminal, yeah, right? Right. Because how could you have a Vulcan criminal? And he'll, he'll tell you, this is how. <laughs> I had to logic it out. So <laughs> this is how I came to that conclusion. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, they're trying to get that information. And, and uh, he, they, the Vulcan dude, he makes, he makes Worf and Raffi fight. To the death. Well, I mean, they start off with a honeypot, right? So basically, they walk in. Raffi makes a big noise, saying she wants to fight to whoever's next. Oh yeah, yeah. Make after Sneed, stink. yeah, yeah. And Worf is just sitting there doing, doing his doing deal. The He's sitting in meditating. meditation, yeah, <laughs> in the middle of battle and stuff like that. Um, and I love what he says to her when she's like. What the hell are you doing? He's like, I'm waiting for the ecology of District 7 to adjust. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Uh, so she goes off and unbeknownst to us, she gets in a hidey hole with a sniper rifle, gives him a... a, a uh, hollow emitter. Hollow mobile emitter, emitter yes. Yeah, a mobile emitter, yeah. Yeah. Like the and, Doc uh, had in uh, Voyager. Yeah, so they, they basically set up to where once... Uh, his name's Kryn, the character. Once his forces arrive... Uh, that, you know, it's supposed to be like, they've got them on point, and Warp is like, I assure you, we have the upper hand. Yeah, and right. And then they get away to, like, Raffi getting captured. Yeah, yeah, and then she, gives, she hears a phaser rifle right behind her head. It's like, oh, yeah. yep. Yeah, he had to plan ahead for them. But uh, actually, we find out that Warf thinking ahead anyway, because he, they do have to fight to the death, and Raffi sticks him with his uh, doctor, I believe that's called, the... Uh, the old knife. I, I may be saying right. that wrong. It's been a while. Yeah, um, but it's the old school one we used to see, and uh, mm-hmm. we think Worf's dead. Like she, the the dude comes over there and puts his hand on his neck, and we think Worf's dead. And I didn't think Worf was dead, but it right. was good for the for the effect anyway. And so, uh, well, I mean, the effect was. Worf still got it right because we yeah. all we see is like him. He gets carried off by two guys. There's still a ton of people surrounding this guy, and then lights go out and people start dropping. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then here he is bleeding, and he comes up behind this Vulcan, and he's got him in a fucking no win situation. So he he gets the information, and yeah. <laughs> what's funny though is he's trying, he's doing his Worf thing where he's talking it up, you know, and then he really yeah. oh. Uh, I am bleeding profusely. <laughs> <laughs> we need to hurry this up. So yeah, they get the information they need, and all is good. And we assume Morph gets patched up because I need medical attention. I would definitely like to see more of Kren in the future, personally. Yeah, yeah, I liked I liked that character a lot. Um, and we didn't even see Raffi and Worf in the last episode, did we? Yeah, so we didn't, this, and we bought it up. They were like, they're definitely going to be in the, the next episode. Yeah, so they had it's going to be the next progression. Yeah. yeah, 
it was a less busy episode, so they had more time for him. That la- the the last episode was so much of that strife of getting away out of the nebula and stuff like that. You really didn't have time for Raffi and War. So yeah. Um, yeah, I liked the way they brought Row in. That was a nice touch. Um, Do you think in the previous episode that the entities that were in the nebula was that just fan service? Because I'm kind of wondering, like. They really had to shoehorn that in there, right? Yeah, I. Who knows, man? I mean, <laughs> is it going to be one of those things that comes back in the last episode and makes, you know, like here and this ties this up too? I hope not. Right. Let's just say it's just, you know, the, something that happens in space that they've never seen before <laughs> and they know exists because they saw it at Far Point. So, you know, maybe that's the extent of it. I don't know. We but, hope. Uh, that's basically it. That was the that was the gist of the episode. Um, you know. Well, there was another flashback with Jack, right? Yeah, in the Jack's transporter having room. Weird, uh, weird flashbacks where he's <clears throat> he's seeing things and he's having these almost premonitions, and he doesn't want them to happen. So you you feel like that he's just not all bad, uh, but there's definitely something going on there. We just don't know what the hell it is, and. I, you know, I've speculated that I think it's some kind of, uh, you know, a changeling hybrid deal or whatever. Maybe it's a baby changeling that, that took over Jack's body and uh, that's how they get the memories. And, and they and, you know, somehow it f- forgot it's a changeling and just thinks it's Jack. I don't have any idea, but I want to say or it's maybe- changeling related. Maybe Beverly's more involved than we know, right? Exactly, yeah, because there's, like you brought up uh, about the hearing that voice. Whenever time we hear a flashback, we hear her voice. It's clearly her voice. Right. Um, so, I don't know, you know, what? what what's it going to be? I, I feel like it has to do with changelings because the changelings want him so bad. Um, and it's right. not because he knows, like, some master plan they're up to or something unless it's embedded in his dna that's we've seen that kind of thing before you know i like mean he could yeah it could be some kind of information he's carrying that, that we don't know about but it could be something that he does know and he's just not sharing right yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. there's a big i don't payday know if he consciously knows it or not that's right. tough to say uh but yeah it continues to be a great episode i'm pretty happy with this season so far uh Again, Michelle Forbes showing up was just a nice touch. We got it. We got a nice little ribbon around Rose's character. Um, see where that came and went. So far, I only have one prediction left, and I'm I'm not sure if it's going to be the next episode or the episode after that. We're actually going to see Mika. Oh, all right. Well, we'll see if that comes to fruition. We'll see. Yep. Stay tuned with us because next week. Maybe we'll find out. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed that little, uh, not so much a recap, just our thoughts on watching the episode this week. Uh, this. That's how we're going to do it. You don't need us to walk you hand in hand because we can't remember how what goes on hand in hand throughout the whole episode. We just want you to uh, know what we thought of the episode and how it shocked us and moved us and whatever it did, whatever way. Thank you so yeah, the much. Play by play, probably a little boring, right? Yeah, play by plays can be boring, <laughs> no doubt. especially if you've watched it already. Like, why do I need this dude telling me what I've already seen? Our reaction to things like Michelle Forbes showing up, things like that, whatever. Good stuff. All right. Thank you, guys. Oh, we'll we, see. We left one thing out. What do we leave out? I love the ending where he figures out the earring. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's got all that. Is- Speaking of, uh, here we all talking about somebody holding information, and we didn't have that great segue. Right. Jesus, I feel like I'm wearing my asshole in my head right now. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, talking about somebody who's got information in a little something, he figures well, out the that the earring's got of the every episode. bit. Of, well, yeah, because we talk about, well, that's your earring, dude. Yeah. You know? And, uh. Then she ended up handing it to him before she leaves, and he comes to find out that it's got every single bit of information that she knows, data that she has on the whole, uh, the Dominion or Changeling invasion of Starfleet, for lack of a better word. And for some reason, Riker knows more about Spycraft. I have no idea. Well, there's so (laughs) much, you know, but there's so many years there that we don't know what Riker kept. Riker was a career guy. 
Yeah. So well, who knows what Riker got up to uh, when he got a hold of the Titan? I mean, we have uh, lower decks, which gives us a little more Riker stuff. Yeah. Um, but I I don't do that show, so it can piss off for all I care. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much. We'll see you next week. Stay tuned. Uh, keep a watch out for the Mando. Little uh, our thoughts on that. We're gonna have that uh, soon. So. Check that out when it gets out. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time.